Happy Sabbath. My brothers and sisters, happy Ab Sabbath. Abadendalongo, Sabadabuino. I have the great privilege to be here and to know my brothers and sisters in Malawi. Malawi. I never thought I would have that privilege. I was this morning remember uh, when I was a little boy in my local church in Brazil. And I was sitting in a Sabbath school. Listening to the teachers. And they were singing and about sending missionaries. And inviting us to bring our little offerings. And my mother will give me an offering every Sabbath. And she was saying, when the teacher comes with the uh, missionary ship, because that, there was a ship in the Sabbath. It, it, it was a small blue ship. That ship was representing some, something that was sending missionaries. And then every children, me included, will bring their offerings and put inside the ship. And when, but then on a once a year, when I was have my birthday, my mother will say, today is a special Sabbath. Because uh, you are going to uh, bring to the church a special offering. Because God healed you. You were about to die. But we prayed to God and God saved your life. Now when it's your birthday, you are going to the church and bring a special offering. It is your birthday offering. And then I will bring that special offering. And then my mother will ask me during the service. Did you give your offering? And then my father will give a different offering for the service. So that when the deacons will come, I will also have an offering during the service. But I remember one day. I was sitting with my father and my mother in the church. And I maybe I was about 12 or 13 years old. And my father, the, the, the deacons were coming again. And then my father put his hand in the pocket. And he brought a bill of, of money. And he was giving me. And for the first time in my life, I had a thought. And, and I said to myself, this is very strange. Because my father took his money from the pocket and gives me in my hand for me to give to the deacon. Why my father did not give the money right away to the deacon? What given to me? And I thought that this was a very childish thing. And I considered myself no longer a child. I, I was thinking about myself as very big. So I said, I would not like to give something that my father puts on my hand. So my friends will look at me and will say, he's very child still. His, his father is giving money his hand for him too. 
And I said to my father, I don't want. And then my father understood. And he started to give the money to me at home. And not in front of my friends. Not to, for me to be ashamed. For me to give that offer. And, and it's very interesting when fathers and mothers understand the importance of teaching children to honor God with their And it's very difficult when some, a child gives tithes and offerings to leave the church. Because Jesus said, wherever your treasure is, your heart will also be. So when you have your treasure in heaven, your heart will also be there. And today I have the privilege. It's a long story. I never intended to be a pastor. And, but the Lord had different plans for my life. And after being far from the Lord. The Lord called me back to him. And one day in the church, I said to the Lord, Lord, I want to give my life to you. When you give your life to God, you no longer decide about your life. The Lord will decide everything about your life. The Lord will decide whom we will you marry. The, the Lord will decide what will you do for life. And I was looking to the children that are here. I can see many children here. One day I was a child in the church. And, and God called me. And you know maybe God is calling you children. And God will prepare many of you to be missionaries. Now it's time for Africa to send missionaries. For a long time we were receiving missionaries. But now it's time for Africa to send missionaries. It's time for Malawi to prepare children for them to grow and to be missionaries. And to send them to the world. I, I would like to share with you some interesting information about the church. You know that the Seventh-day Adventist church started in the United States. After the great deception, they, they were waiting for Christ. And in me, in 1844, and Christ did not come. And they started to study the Bible. And, and they discovered the Sabbath. And they were studying the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. And in 1863, our church started in the, in the United States. And at the beginning, they believe that uh, they don't need to send missionaries abroad. Because there were people from almost every nation living there in the United States. Then they thought if they will preach there, the, all the world will be in a, in a way the world will be reached. But later God told them, God showed them in a very clear way that they should send missionaries. To preach to every nation, tribe, people, and tongue. 
Then they started to send missionaries. They send missionaries here to Africa. They send missionaries to South America from where I am. They preach the gospel to my family there in South America. I don't know the story of your family, how you you started to understand the Adventist message, which is the Bible message. But, but I am sure that your family has a story. So when they, a missionary, an American German missionary, arrived at the place of my great grandfather was living. And he was traveling a horse. And they, he asked to stay in my great grandfather's house. And, and then when he was there, he started to preach to my great-grandfather. And he preached for a long time until late in the night. And my great-great-grandfather accepted the message. He was baptized. And then that started our story. And at the beginning, the largest part of Adventist membership was in the United States and in Europe. Now, everything shifted. Now, the biggest part of our membership is here in Africa. Almost half of all church members of the Adventist church are located in Africa. We have in Africa around 43% of all members in the world. And we have very little membership in Europe now. And now it's time for us to send missionaries to those other places. And we are called to raise our children to be missionaries. We are living and they will live in the last days of the story of this world. Jesus is coming very soon. Now we have in our church around 22 million members around the world. Roughly 10 million are located in Africa. Some of them also in South and Inter America. And we have kind little members in Europe. Very few members in Asia. We have some very challenging places where we still don't have any members. But you know we have 235 regions and countries in the world. From those 235 countries or regions in the world, the Adventist Church is already present in 212. In some of those countries, our presence is very small. But we are there. Even though we need to grow there. In other, in other countries, we are very, very present. Like, for instance, here in Malawi. Here in Malawi, of each 30 citizens of the country, one is Seventh-day Adventist. This is very much. 
This is a lot of people in the Adventist church. In my country, for instance, Brazil, we have a significant presence of Adventists there. But not as much as here. In my country, for each 122 citizens, one is Adventist. But not here in Malawi. We are here in Malawi, the presence is bigger. Because God is calling you to do the work and you are listening to his voice. Uh, we just heard that beautiful song. In God asking us to go. And I am very sure that God is calling all of us to go. And starting our work in our neighborhood. Starting the world with those who are close to us. I will tell you a story that is still developing. Uh, in 2019, before the pandemic, I told to my wife, and because let me tell you before that, let me tell you something else. I am very much impressed that this work that I do that everyone sees does, doesn't count every much for my spiritual life. Let me tell you why. The church is paying me to preach. The, the church is giving me a salary to travel and to preach. So this is not counting too much for my spiritual growth. Because I myself don't know if I do this because the church is paying me or because I want to honor Christ. So, what is really important is what I do and no one is knowing. This is what will show if I am following Jesus or not. If you are an elder of the church, if you are a leader in your local church, what you do that everyone is seeing, because you were, you were elected to be a leader of the church, and then the church expects you to do something, when you do that, it doesn't mean much. What is really meaningful for your spiritual life is what you do for Jesus and no one is watching. Then you will know if you are really serving Jesus. So I, for a long time, I'm praying, asking God to give me Bible study. Because you may be surprised but the church doesn't expect me to give Bible study. Because I travel much. I am constantly traveling. I am constantly in different continents, different countries. So how can I give Bible studies? In order to give Bible study, you need to be regular. You need to give at, at least one Bible study per week. So how would I do that? So I said to myself, I will ask God to solve that problem. So that Sabbath morning I was inside the church. And during the week I was praying God. I was saying God, God, I would like to give Bible study. But let me tell you the truth. I, I would not like to lie to you. I don't like very much to give Bible studies. Don't tell anyone that. I, I am not proud of it. 
As a pastor, I was supposed to like to give Bible studies. But the thing is that I prefer to rest at my home than to give Bible studies. I am so tired to, to work. For work. I would like to rest when I am home. But the Lord is asking me to give Bible studies. Because when I give Bible studies, I am growing the knowledge of God. And I am the one that is more benefited than the people that are studying Bible That's why God is asking me to give Bible study. So even though I don't like very much, I am praying to God. I am saying God, Lord, you know I don't like very much giving Bible study. But you know I need to give Bible study. Because unless I am leading someone to heaven, I am not going there. Everyone who is going to heaven is leading someone else. To go to and I know that. And I don't like to give Bible studies because I am a sinner. So every morning I go to the presence of God. And I say, God, change my heart, my Lord. Give me willingness to do your work. Give me love for people that I don't naturally have. And help me to work for people. So I started to pray the Lord to send me someone for me to give Bible study. And we prayed for one week. Then my wife and I were inside the church. And one lady came close to my wife. And while I was doing something else inside the church. And then that lady asked my wife. She said, I married that man. He's not an Adventist. Would your husband give him Bible studies? And my wife knew we were praying to give Bible studies. And my wife said, this is the answer for, to our prayer. And my wife said, yes, my husband will give Bible studies. And English is not my first language. I have never given Bible studies in English before. It will be a challenge to me. And this man was a very well prepared person. He studied, he studied at John Hopkins, one of the most prestigious universities in the world. He will, and, and, and I am not as smart as he is. So I said, Lord, please help me. I cannot teach this man the Bible. But you can use the small things in this world. I am very small, but you can use me. Please help me. And I was asking God which kind of Bible study series I should use. And then the Lord impressed me to give him Bible studies about Daniel and Revelation. And I said, no, God, this will be very difficult. This man knows a lot about of history. He's a very wise person. But the Lord impressed me to give Bible studies on Daniel and Revelation. And, and then you know what? The pandemic hit. Yeah, and we were studying the Bible. And how, how to do that? Then we moved to studying the Bible online. And we Finally, we finished the study. And he did not make any decision. And I was praying for him. Actually, I was praying for him 
every day. Because let me tell you something. Prayer will do when you give Bible studies. Prayer, prayer will do more than Bible study. I am not saying you should not give Bible studies. No. But if you only give Bible studies and, and you don't pray for that person, there will be no conversion. Conversion comes in answer of prayer. So we need to pray and pray and pray and pray for those who are studying the Bible. And I kept praying for this man every day. And then finally, two months ago, he sent me a message here. The message is here on my phone. And then he sent me a phone. And he said, now I am prepared. He did not even mention baptism. He, know I will, uh, 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 I will, he knew I will know what he was meaning. So he said, I am prepared. Now tell me what's the next step. I, I was in Argentina. I was so happy. The Lord moved his heart to be baptized. And yesterday, when I was flying from uh, Johannesburg to uh, Malawi, before the flight, I received a message from him. He said, the first Sabbath of May will be baptized my baptism. And I was so happy I will be there. I will preach that morning in his church. But then something else happened. Uh, a woman that was divorced in Brazil was invited by his wife to come to the U.S. She was very sad because the husband left her. So she came from Brazil to the U.S. And she stayed there for six months in that home. Recovering from that sadness. And while she was there, that Adventist woman took her to the church every Sabbath and started to teach her about the Sabbath. And she, that woman that invited her is the, uh, is the wife of this man that will be baptized. And, and that woman that came from Brazil started to be impressed about the Sabbath. And she would invite, uh, and that woman uh, invited my wife and myself to join them for meals many times. So, so I became friend of this woman that was divorced. Then she went, she went back to Brazil. And she started to text me on, on phone. And she said, one day I will be convinced about the Sabbath. And then I said, when you want, we can start studying the Bible together. And she said, okay, but did not agree. Then some weeks ago, she, she said, now I'm prepared. I would like to study the Bible. Bible. But how we will study the Bible? I live in the United States. And she lives in Brazil. How can we study the Bible? So now we decided to start studying the Bible by Zoom. It's online. It's online. And we decided, to talk, I talked to my wife, and we decided to study the Bible with her 
starting last Friday, not yesterday, but the other. But this lady which lives in the U.S. and is married to that man that is going to be baptized. She said, Pastor, I would like to also participate of the Bible study. Even though I am already Adventist, because I am friend of that lady from Brazil, I will, I will be together to, just to follow. And I said, okay, you may join us. And, but then she said, I also have two brothers that are not baptized. May I invite them to come? I said yes. And, and, and their wives. I said yes. Then she said, but I have other friends there. May, may I invite them? I said yes. But they also have their friends. Can I invite more people? Would you mind if we invite more people? And then I said, no, you may invite anyone. And she started to invite. And then we created that group on WhatsApp. And group is called uh, Bible Course. Jesus, the restorer of life. And this group is here in my, in my WhatsApp. And in this last week, this group reached 20 people. We have 20 people in these groups that will study the Bible. And the study is every Friday at 8 o'clock Brazil time, 7, uh, uh, 7 o'clock in the night in U.S. time. And but, but this time in Malawi is 1 in the morning. So I needed to sleep because I needed to preach this morning. So I said to my wife, you, you will teach the lesson. And she said, no, me no. You are the pastor. I said, but you are the pastor's wife. You will prepare. You will present the Bible study. And she presented the Bible study. They are waking up now, this time. This time is Sabbath morning very early. So I, I, I did not talk with my wife after the, the, she presented the course. But I have seen the message on WhatsApp. And so people were saying, the name of my wife is Mari. And some people were saying, Mari, we like to, to know you, to get to know you. We like the Bible study. Thank you very much for giving Bible study. And we are so happy. Because God, even though we are failing sinners, God invites us to partner in mission as Elder Mundia preached this morning. And when I started to become, when I became a pastor, on my first pastoral district, there was an elder of the church. A very active man. He was very missionary. But he was a very shy person. And he told me his secret. He said, Pastor, I am very shy. I don't have the courage to approach people. I don't know how to approach people. 
But I would like to work for Jesus. So I said to myself, he said. I, he said, I, I said to Jesus, Jesus. You know that I am shy. You know that I cannot approach people. But I promise you something. Where, when, whenever you send someone that will ask me for Bible studies, I will give Bible studies. So please, God, send me people. And you know what he told me? He said, Pastor, God is sending me so many people that I am not able to give Bible studies And he was a very active person. What I'm trying to say this morning is that God is willing to send you if you want to grow in your relationship with God, give Bible study. If you want your marriage to become better, give Bible study. Someone may ask, what Bible studies has to do with marriage? So I will tell you something else. So no, when I married my wife, we did not know how many problems we will face in our marriage. Our marriage was not easy. It was very difficult. Difficult for me and difficult for her. I was not an easy person to live with. She either, either was not an easy person to live with. You know, when two sinners marry, it's not easy. And we spend a lot of time trying to solve our, our marriage problem. Till we reach to the conclusion that it was impossible to solve. And I remember one night that the light was off and we were talking in our bed trying to solve our own problems. And the Thought came to my wife. To my my wife. This is a very selfish attitude. We are facing problems because we are constantly trying to solve our own problems. When God is calling us to solve the problem of others. You see the point? You are working to solve your marriage problem. But God is calling you to solve others' problems, not your own problems. The focus must change, must shift from you to others. From your own marriage to the life of others. And then I said to my wife, this is why we are facing problems. We are constantly trying to solve our own problems and to, to have a better marriage to live better the life this life in this earth while people are dying people who still don't know Jesus that Jesus can forgive their sins we should shift the will stop we need to stop trying to solve our own problems and unite both of us and it's, uh, to become a missionary couple and to be married not to be happy in this world this world is fading away this world will be destroyed everyone will die 
Jesus will come again. And we are fighting each other. And we are trying to solve our marriage problem. While Jesus is saying, hey, people are dying around you. Why not to unite you to become a, 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 a a, a couple, a, a missionary couple. To work for people. To have small group in your home. And to help people to get to know Jesus. And then we decided to, to, to become a missionary couple. We were in our bed. And we knelt down in upon the bed. And that night we prayed together. And we said, God, please make us a missionary couple. Let us reach out to people wherever we are. Let, let us invite people to come to our home. And let us live to honor and glorify you. Give us love to people. Like Jesus who loved sinners. And when you ask Jesus this kind of love to love sinners. To work for them. To bother yourself for them. Because they will bring a little trouble for you. They will disturb you. They will come to your home. But Jesus also was disturbed by us. Jesus left the comfort in heaven to come down. And the Bible says that he died for us. To be able to take our sins upon himself. So that anyone who confesses his sins may be forgiven. May receive a new heart. May become son and daughters of God. So when we imitate Jesus. God gives us this kind of love. And when God gives you this kind of love for sinners, for then other sinners like you sinners, then this kind of God-given love will affect your marriage also. And your marriage will be different. If you are involved in, in, in missionary work. So that's why I challenge couples here. Not to wait more. But today, commit yourselves to God. And to say to God, God, make us a missionary couple. We would like to work for our relatives. We would like to work for our neighbor. We would like to give Bible study. And those who believe they don't know how to give Bible studies. It's like to swim. Someone never knows how to swim before <inaudible> starting swimming. You will never uh, uh, learn to swim unless you enter the water. You need to enter the water and move yourself in the water. You will, you will drink a little bit of water, but you will survive. And then you will learn how to give Bible study. But you need to start leading people to God. Don't believe that only by giving your tithe to your offerings you are doing missions. The first kind of mission you do by your own work of course our tithes and offerings are sent through 
all the world. And that's why the Adventist church has spread through all the world. Because the tithes and offerings we give does not stay in our local church. Part of our offerings stay in our local church. But part of it is sent through all the world. And it's time for us to pray to God. And to say, God, please bless me. I am I have here my Bible opened in Deuteronomy chapter 8. We will not have time now to cover all chapter 8. But we will start. And the afternoon we will end chapter 8. But chapter 8, the context for chapter 8, is when the people of Israel was about to enter the promised land. Then Moses preached to them. And but they were not still, they were not yet in the promised land. They were in the desert. The desert is a symbol of privation, hardship. And I may be talking to someone that is facing hardships. Someone that may be facing financial constraints is passing through the desert. My father would say, he would say, everyone has at least one desert in life. And maybe this time is the, your desert. It's a time of hardship. Of very difficult things happening in your life. Maybe you are asking yourself, where is God? But remember something. That God was the one who sent them to the desert. It was God's plan to send them to the desert. So when you are in your desert, don't complain like the Israelites. But try to understand what are God's plans for you. What is God expecting from you? Verse 1 says, Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. That you may live and multiply. And go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your father. This verse 1 is key in chapter 8. God has commandments. And he expects us to obey his commandments. And the reason why God gives us commandments is not to see who is going to heaven and who is not going to heaven. The reason why God gave us commandments is to protect us here. The Bible teaches us that commandments cannot save us. We are saved by faith. But if you have faith in God, if you trust that he knows better than you, that his plans are better than your plans. So if you have this kind of faith in him, then you will obey God's commandment. And then Moses is saying to the Israelites, remember that they were in the desert. 
They were facing privations, very harsh times. In and life. God says, Every commandment which I command you today, you must carefully observe. Some people believe. And that those who obey every single commandment are fanaticals are the ones who are radicals that's not true if to be fanatic if to be radical is to obey every commandment of God's law and he's not meaning here only the Ten Commandments, but all commandments. In the Bible and spiritual prophecy are far more commandments than just the Ten Commandments. And some people believe that only those who are radical or fanatical are the ones who obey every single commandment. And they believe that people that are more balanced, they don't need to obey all commandments. But if you believe that being a balanced Christian means not to obey all commandments, which ones should we disobey in order to be balanced? You see the point? God is saying here in verse 1, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. Oh, this is a challenge to me. Because not all commandments of God I like to obey. Some of them I may like. Others I may not like. But what should I do then? I need to ask for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When I ask God and I confess my sins, I will tell you how, how I do. You don't tell anyone. This is a secret. If, if you tell Elder Ted Wilson, I will be fired. Yeah, yeah. So it's a secret. I'm only telling you you know, I go to God's presence every morning, early in the morning. And the reason why I go to God's presence is not because I am a good person. Not because I am a pastor. I have understood if I go to God as a pastor, God cannot accept me. God cannot accept if I go to him as a pastor and I say, oh Lord, I thank you because I'm a pastor. I thank God because I am a tight payer. I thank God because I'm a leader of the church. I thank God because I'm a vegetarian. I thank the Lord because I keep the Sabbath. You know what the Lord will tell me? I have nothing to do with you. Because I have come to save sinners. And you are too beautiful in your own sight. You believe you are already holy. I cannot do anything with you. But the Lord said, I have come to save sinners. And Paul said, from which I am the, the, the main sinner. And Paul would see himself a sinner. 
And I have learned from Paul that I must go to God as sinner and not as a pastor. So I go every morning to God. And I say, God, I'm a sinner. Please change my heart. And I am in real danger when I cannot see any sin to confess. Because the, my Bible says those who say they have not sinned they are what? What does your Bible say? When you say you don't have any sin what you are? You are a liar. And the truth is not in you. But sometimes I believe that I am a very good person. And I go to God. And I have my moment of confession. And I cannot remember any important sin to confess. Then I said to myself, uh -huh. There is a problem here. Because if I believe I do not have anything to confess, it means that I am far from Jesus. Because the closer to Jesus, the more you will see yourself as a sinner. But as you go far from Jesus, you believe you are a very good person. Maybe you are not killing anyone. Maybe you are not robbing. And then you believe you are a very good person. But you are not allowing the Holy Spirit to finish his work in, of cleansing you. So I need to go to God's presence and say, God, you have your commandments. Make me to love your commandments. This love is not natural for me. This love must be implanted by the Holy Spirit. I naturally don't love to obey God's commandments. But the Lord, what the Lord is saying here in chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1, God is saying, if you obey all carefully all my commandments, then you will live and you will multiply. And you will go in and possess the land. God has a land for you. God has planned possessions for us. But the condition for us to possess are double. The first one is this one we are reading here on Chapter 8, verse 1. And the other one, uh, we have no time to study in the Bible, but I will tell you very quickly. The other one God told to Abraham. It, God said to Abraham, Abraham, I have chosen you. Because I know you will teach your children after you. For your children to walk in the ways of the Lord. So if you do those two things, you yourself obey God's commandments. And then you teach your children to obey God's commandments. The Lord is saying to you, you will inherit the land. I will give you the possessions I am planning for you. But you must fulfill those two conditions. You must you yourself obey my commandments. But how can you obey God's commandments if you are a sinner? You need to go to Jesus. You need to say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, change my heart. Send me your Holy Spirit. Make me to like your commandments. 
And then how can you teach your children? Well, this is a process. When we have children, we have children for God. Children do not belong to ourselves. They belong to God. And God expects us to give them back to him. So since early age, we need to teach them in the ways of the Lord. I have learned that since a woman is pregnant and even before pregnancy, you need to pray for your children. And where they are in the mother's belly, you need to pray for them. For them to be converted. I was in a meeting, uh, in a pastor's meeting. And when uh, there was a moment for prayer requests, and every pastor was making their prayer requests. When came my time, at that time my children were two and four years old. So when came my time of prayer request, I said my prayer request is for the conversion of my children. And one pastor friend of mine looked back to me and said, but how old are your children? I said, two and four. And you are praying, asking prayer for the conversion of your children? They are two and four years old. I said, yes. I know that. I need to pray for their conversion. I don't want them just to be in the church. I want their hearts to be converted. For them, for their hearts to be in heaven. So you need to do a lot of things. And this afternoon we will talk a little bit about how to bring your children to God. What are some of the habits that we need to develop to stick the hearts of your children to God in heaven so that when you go to heaven, your family go with you and you prepare your children to be missionaries. Before we finish, I will just tell you this. Part of my story. When I was three months old, three months old, I was a baby, I was very sick. And before I was three years old, I had three belly surgeries, intestine surgery. I almost died many times. And I was saved by my fathers and the church prayer. It was a miracle. And last time I was about to die, when I was uh, about three years old, the doctor said to my father, if we make a surgery, he will die. But if we don't make anything, he will die anyway. So what should we do? Then my father said, open him. And then the doctor made the surgery. My father went to the hospital's restroom to pray. And, and my father prayed that prayer. My father said, Lord, if this little boy will grow to fill Satan's ranks, let him die. But if you want to use him to preach the gospel, please perform a miracle now so that he may live. And I promise you, God, that I will raise all my children to become your servants. 
my focus will not be for them to be important people in the world. I don't want my children to be rich people. To be important. To be very well known. I will raise my children to be missionaries. And prepare them for mission. And my father, my father said, Amen. And he raised up. And, and I came out of surgery. And started to recover. <coughs> and I grew up. And I never planned to be a pastor. But my father and my mother will tell me every time. You were promised to God. We promised to raise you as a missionary. And I said to myself, okay, I will do anything else for God, but never I will be a pastor. I can work at a conference office. I can wash and clean I can do anything else but not being a pastor. But my father and my mother were praying and they were doing something that I will tell you this afternoon. And you know what happened? It's a long story. I don't have time to tell you. I finally concluded that I would need to, to be a pastor. And, and now my brother is also a pastor. We are three. And my sister is married to a pastor. The three of us working for God. And it's the biggest honor in this life. To raise your children to become God's servants. Not all can be pastors. But all can be missionaries. All of us. And the Lord will bless you. If you keep his commandments. And then if you teach your children the way of the Lord. The Lord will say about you as he said about Abraham. God said about Abraham. I am promising him a land. And I have chosen Abraham. Because I know he will teach his children. He will not leave his children the way they want. He will faithfully teach his children. He will teach the way of the Lord. That after he dies, his children will keep serving the Lord. My father is about to die. He's 90, almost 91 years old. He will die very soon. But he, he can know that his children is still serving the Lord. Keeping the way of the Lord. What about your children? God is calling you. We need to think in the next generation. You will go. I will go. Our children will stay. And my father will say something. He told me many times. The most happy thing for me. I know I will die but I will be under the ground and you and your brother and your sister will be walking upon that doing the work of God and I am there eating grass by the roots yeah, I am dead. But you will be there working for God. But now I will also die. You will die. And our children will be walking. And we will be underground. But our children will be there working for God. And when Jesus comes, we all go to heaven. May the Lord bless your family. The Lord is waiting for us to raise up our children for could him. Could it, could it this afternoon we will talk about how to do this. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen.
kufika mzose kukala okhulupirika pa mau amene chuma yankula maganizidwe ndi machitidwe onse ino ndinu yehova amene chikondi chanu chiribe marire mene mwati yankula chotere mulungu watu kuti paeneka kutumizidwa ma missionary malo osiana siana kuti uthenga wanu ukalalikidwe tinao malonso amene sadafikiridwe malai momuno Tule na onso malo, paziko lonse na pans. Tandizani Afrika, monga mene tamva kuchoke na kwa mtumiki wanu. Missionary, ndia tumiki, alariki, maiko osiana siana. Ziko mkwambiri chifuacha kutila ngula. Chachikulu chumetu kupempani, inu Yesu Kristu mpulumuzi. Ndi chakuti mutikuru kire, ton sezochi mwazatu. Ndi fanto perewera, mutiene reze. Pachi pulumutso chimene muda tikonzera. Ndiko kuru kila tonse. Ndu ndu wantu anu ndu wasonkana panu. Amene muna zigurira noka ndi mwazi wanu pantanda. Siawa tonse tilipanu. Tikupempera mufomereze tonsefe maina atu mufumu anu. Fa pempeo latu. Chifukwa cha utenga umene unafika pakati patu. Kumansu pada zibusa panu. Ndiya tumikiano amena chokera kumpoto, kumwera, pachikau chapa katipo mpano. Amene msabatai ya akangarika kwa mbiri kulari kira utenga wanu wa udindo wa jikrisitu. Mwadali cha zibusa onsewa, ndi mabanja au, amena asia kumbuyo. Mwadali cha ndu kwa sungabwino. Ndiya chokoriru onse wa udindo wa jikrisitu. Kuno kuchikau chapa kati, kuyunion, kudivision, kakare kujeneral conference. Chisomo ndi mtendere. Zikare na fetonse mwambu ya watu Yesu Kristu. Amen.